for your position, it actually is important to know when does human life begin. And, and you can't just brush that aside the way that like Walter Block or Murray Rothbard wanted to. Yeah. So it, it is incredibly important. I think very important for us to be precise in the science, especially since that science is available to us. Mm -hmm. It's it's very easy to say that life begins at the moment of conception. We hear this phrase from pro-lifers all the time, the moment of conception. And the reality is, is that conception um, is about a three-day process. It begins with fertilization. And during that, that three days, it goes through something called the maternal zygotic transition, basically where the zygote takes over um, and controls from that point forward. What they found is that um, for, for human embryos in particular, that at the end of conception, at the end of this process, uh, the zygote is, um, is autonomous and self-organizing and is the one who directs development. So although we wouldn't say that the zygote has consciousness or anything like that or any of the elements of, you know, what Mises would call human action, mm -hmm. it does have direct and immediate control, which is something that that Rothbard said was necessary for self-ownership. And of course, it's a human. And that's that's the other condition that the Roth, Rothbard argued was necessary for self-ownership. So those two things obtain as soon as the process of conception is complete. Now, it's important that that process be complete because if it's not complete, you don't ever have a human being. You don't have, um, the zygote never takes over. It just, there's there's plenty of times where sperm and egg come together, they fertilize, and the process never completes and you never get a human being. So I think it's important to be precise in that. So mm -hmm. I always say that life begins um, at the completion of conception because that is the moment where mom's body isn't in control of, of development. Mom's body is in control of um, the biological processes now taking place in the zygote. The zygote's in, in control of that. Can you elaborate a bit more on what exactly you mean? Because from one level of analysis, it's like, oh, the laws of physics are always just operating. So what does it mean Like, if you're watching a movie of the development of this entity inside the mother's body? that what does it mean to say, oh, oh, right here, the mother's in control, but oh, now this is in control. Like, what, what exactly do you mean by that? Well, in this case, the genetic material has quite a bit to do with um, passing on instructions to the cell. So a, an unfertilized egg has genetic instructions from the mom to, you know, basically to receive a sperm cell and then close itself off once, mm -hmm. once that's done. Um, during this process, though, the genetic material um, has to merge between father and mother. And so the instructions that are happening uh, in the maternal element of the cell start to taper off. And the the genetic instructions for the zygote start to take over. It's sort of like okay. an, an inverse relationship you might think of it as. Okay, so to the extent that we can speak... Um, of, oh, like the cell's DNA tells it what to do. Like mm -hmm. to the extent that that's a meaningful statement, you're saying, well, clearly if you have a fertilized egg at some point, then, you know, it's 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 not the mother's DNA anymore. It's the, the new, right? Uh, what will eventually be the fetus's DNA that's given the instructions. Yeah, yeah and there's, there's actually, there, there are scientific studies which um, show that this takes place outside of the womb as well. So they've, mm. they've found that this, this happens, um, you know, in, in the Petri dish. So we know for certain that it's not the mother who's directing development of the fetus or any of these other stages. It really is the zygote. It's, it really, it, it really does demonstrate, um, uh, autonomy, biological mm. autonomy, and it is self-organizing and it does drive its own development. Like, the um, the first thing that it does, aside from starting to split, is um, it moves, you know, into um, uh, into the womb such that it can implant in the lining of the uterus, and then it immediately goes to work building the placenta and the umbilical cord. Well, what is that? Well, that's shelter and food supply. Mm -hmm. um, so, and this is all driven. This is all driven by baby, and we know it's baby be because it's baby's DNA. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, there's, it, it, those, those activities taking place are really important to, to understand and distinguish between, you know, mom's body and, and baby's body. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. 